What is up, everyone? I've got a new reaction slash rant type video for you today, and it's about good news this time. Imagine that. Spider-Man returns to the MCU? What? <laughs> what? What happened, Sony? Did Kevin Feige schedule the release date for his Star Wars movie to coincide with your Far From Home sequel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this news came out like an hour ago, and if you saw the video where I weighed in on Spider-Man leaving the MCU because Sony backed out of the deal with Disney, you probably know how I feel about this. Here's a couple articles about this. Spider-Man is officially back in the MCU following Sony-Disney announcement, says IGN. Sony and Disney have announced they will team up for a third film in the Spider-Man Homecoming series. Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige will produce the film starring Tom Holland, which has a release date, already has a release date, of July 16th, 2021. Spider-Man will also have an appearance in a future MCU film, God willing that'll be an Avengers film, as arranged with the partnership. Amy Pascal, producer of the previous two Spider-Man films in this series, will be producing the third one as well through Pascal Pictures. That's not good news, but in this case, I'll take what I can get. I am thrilled that Spidey's journey in the MCU will continue, and I and all of us at Marvel Studios are very excited that we get to keep working on it, Feige said in a statement. Spider-Man is a powerful icon and hero whose story crosses all ages and audiences around the globe. He also happens to be the only hero with the superpower to cross cinematic universes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess he, he kind of had to say that. Because Sony had to save face somehow, didn't they? So as Sony continues to develop their own Spideyverse, you never know what surprises the future might hold. Yeah, surprises like Spider-Man not appearing in the Spideyverse, God willing. This is terrific. Peter Parker's story took a dramatic turn in Far From Home. I could not be happier. We will all be working together as we see where his journey goes, Pascal said. <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you're all happy about that now, aren't you? Yeah, I'll bet. This has been a winning partnership for the studios, the franchise, and the fans. I'm overjoyed it will continue. Okay, that part's true. Winning partnership. Yes, this was very beneficial to everybody. It was beneficial to keep this relationship going. Seems they forgot that for a little bit. And this is from Empire. Spider-Man back in the MCU for Far From Home sequel and another Marvel movie. The tangled web over the rights to Spider-Man continued to spin, and now comes the news we'd all been hoping for ever since a contractual renegotiation saw Marvel's wall crawler crash out of the MCU in a dispute between Sony Pictures and Marvel Studios. A new deal has been struck, which will bring a third Spider-Man film within the continuity of the MCU. A sequel to Far From Home will arrive on the 16th, July 2021. With Tom Holland back in the titular role, Kevin Feige will produce the movie alongside Amy Pascal, though it is currently unconfirmed whether Homecoming and Far From Home director John Watts will be back. Not only that, but the release confirms that Spider-Man will also appear in a future Marvel Studios film. No word yet on which film that is, though. And the rumor mill is going to start spinning on that one. Stay tuned for more as the story continues to unfold, but in the meantime, file this one alongside James Gunn's Guardians return in the huge sigh of relief folder. Damn Skippy. Holy shit! Not many details beyond the announcement itself, so it's anyone's guess how this happened, but I have two theories. Number one, maybe Sony just got cold feet, remembered that they don't exactly have a sterling track record with this franchise, and realized they had a really cushy arrangement with Marvel and Disney, where they didn't have to do anything but put up the money and rake in a lot more money while proven hitmaker Marvel Studios handled all the hard stuff and cranked out blockbuster after blockbuster for them. Theory number two... Maybe it was just sheer embarrassment. Sony was so transparently trying to cover their asses and sway public opinion back in their favor after the deal with Disney fell through, saying, oh, it's, it's all good, we, we have a template we believe we can follow to make Spider-Man movies even better than the MCU did, and the Sony Spider-Verse is going to be six different kinds of awesome. Oh, and because we just love you fans so much, here's a Far From Home re-release with several minutes of previously unseen footage, even though you saw most of that in the trailers. But most importantly of all you guys, we only backed out because Kevin Feige, well, he's just very busy these days. He's got all the Phase 4 movies to produce, he's got all the new Disney Plus Marvel shows, he's so overworked right now that... The poor guy, he just doesn't have the time to work on a new Spider-Man movie. So, this was all for the best, you'll see. And then Kevin Feige is over here like, too busy. 
I'm too busy to work on a new Spider-Man movie? Not too busy to produce a new Star Wars movie, motherfuckers. And so that news comes out, and then Tom Rothman and Amy Pascal are just sitting in the corner holding their dicks like, well, shit, this is embarrassing. We may have to eat some crow on this one. It would not surprise me at all if that was the case, honestly. The timing of this was very, very suspicious. Lucasfilm announces that Kevin Feige is making a Star Wars movie for them, and not two days later, the Marvel sony deal just magically falls back into place. Anyone really think that's a coincidence? But you know what? You know what? I don't even care how it happened right now. I really don't. This is fantastic news. Now Marvel will continue to handle Spider-Man, they'll get to finish the story they started with him, and we won't have to suffer through a Sony-produced third film where all the MCU characters are just suddenly not there, where continuity has to get thrown out the window because the events of the previous Tom Holland films can't be mentioned or referenced, so they just have to retcon everything, and in all likelihood where the story is completely butchered beyond all recognition because Sony insists on using characters they don't understand and that don't belong there like in Spider-Man 3, or throwing in tons of crap that doesn't need to be there because they want to hastily set up their own shared universe at the expense of destroying the movie that setup takes place in, like in Amazing Spider-Man 2. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm freaking thrilled about this. And I know some people are not necessarily on board with it, aren't totally in love with what Disney and Marvel were doing with Spider-Man and the MCU, but I really think this was all for the best. I just don't trust Sony with the Spider-Man IP. I haven't for a long time. I'm sorry, but Sony just sucks at managing this franchise. They fucked up the Raimi trilogy, and I don't even like the Raimi trilogy, but a lot of other people do. At least they did until the third one came around. They fucked up the Amazing Spider-Man movies so bad Marvel had to swoop in and bail their asses out. And recently, they did have a couple fluky successes. Venom ended up making a lot of money somehow. God knows why, that movie was a garbage fire. And I can't imagine many people were looking forward to another installment. And Into the Spider-Verse was the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie to date. The only thing it could hang its head on is that it did get them an Oscar. Best Animated Feature, yeah, congratulations. I'm sure there was lots of patting yourselves on the back for that one. But the dudes who made the movie and won Sony that Oscar signed a deal with another studio, so they won't be back. So maybe Sony got a little overconfident for a minute there, but it didn't take much to deflate that balloon, and it looks like finally cooler heads have prevailed. I think this is great. I think this is absolutely the best thing for all parties involved. The one thing I do worry about a little bit is now that rumor that Marvel wanted to use Spider-Man to humanize Captain Marvel because she was coming off as a stiff, arrogant, unlikable, charm-deficient block of wood has just gained a lot more traction. I hope and pray that there is no truth to that rumor. I love Tom Holland's Spider-Man, but I don't want to see him as a bumbling sidekick for Brie Larson to leech charisma off of. So, I am a little concerned about that, but Marvel hasn't let me down yet, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. What do you guys think about Spider-Man returning to the MCU? Let me hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think about this video down in the comments section below. Kick the YouTube algorithm right in the balls by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I'll be back very soon with a new video. Over. Out.